All right, I have an excellent connection according to my computer and it says that I am live. It is six o'clock on the East Coast of the United States and my name is Yvonne and welcome to another live stream from the Jelly Roll Club. All right, everybody, so this is the Plant Lady Project. This is where we finally start getting down to the nitty gritty of working on our plants. So let me get started by sharing all of the supplies we're gonna need for today. Um, I will show you which ones are must-haves and which ones are just kind of nice-to-haves. But welcome, tell us where you're from. If you've never been to the Jelly Roll Club, if you give it a thumbs up um, and you hit that bell, you'll always get notified whenever I'm live. So if you've never done that before, go ahead and do that and let's get started. All right, everybody, my name's Yvonne. Tell us where you're from in the chat. I see a bunch of people out there already. So, all right, let's get started. All right, friends, in this series, we are working on the Plant Lady Project. And so you should have downloaded um, the main handout the first month that we did it. But there uh, have been three months so far, and let me just kind of show you what we have so far. Um, here, let me close that. So here it is. So our launch date was June 11th. And we were supposed to be working on just kind of an overview of the project. Look at all these people out there. I see Linda, Christine, Deneen. I see Pat, Frida, Kathy, Sue. Look at all these fun people. All right. Um, Zach from Michigan. Hi, Zach. All right, friends. So June 11th, I did a video and I did a complete overview of what the project was all about. July 2nd. Um, was the last month that we worked on this and I shot, showed you how to create the pots and now we're gonna work on the next skill that you need to finish this quilt top with me because this is an art quilt, is thread painting, okay? So what is thread painting? And so let me remove this image so you can see. Thread painting is what we're gonna work on for the next two months. I'm gonna show you how to create images that involve sketching with thread and let me show you what, what I mean by that. So I'm going to get rid of this uh, calendar here and I'm gonna show you the, the next image. Okay, thread painting is literally what it sounds like. It's taking threads and creating an image. Now this is on one end. This is uh, by an, a quilt artist named Emily. I think it's Lyle, if I'm not mistaken. But she took a variety of threads and what she did is she took an, an inspiration piece, which was Starry Night by Van Gogh, and then she took all of the threads that matched the colors in the painting, and then what she did was literally created that image using only needle and thread from her sewing machine. So she used a juki, and she did a lot of heavy, heavy, heavy thread work. And that's one type of thread painting. Another type of thread painting involves creating an image and an outline and using thread as an embellishment. And so that's what we're gonna work on today. And so I'm gonna get rid of this image right here. And we're gonna be working on uh, image number seven, which is the cat palm, also known as the camadoria. For those of you who are plant ladies like me, uh, the cat palm or the cascade palm is a small palm tree that grows in Mexico and Central America, but it's often used as a tropical house plant in, in the Northern Hemisphere because we don't have nice uh, tropical climates, so we keep these inside. But it's a wonderful house plant. Like I said, it's known as the cat palm or the cascade palm. So that's what we're gonna be working on today. It's um, plant number seven. If you want to mark your plants, uh, I showed you how to make the pots using images one through five. Your second handout has images six through 10, and so you should have the two top rows worth of images in your handouts, okay? All right, so let's get started. So for today's lesson, you are going to need a few things. Um, this is just a regular embroidery hoop, like the kind that you would do hand embroidery with. This one is plastic, but you can certainly use a wooden one. Uh, mine is a, uh, an eight inch hoop, I have a pair of um, good sharp applique scissors. I'm using jeans needles, and these are big ones. If you notice, these are 9014 or 116. So either one of those, because we're gonna be piercing our fabric, and so we don't need skip stitches. 
The other thing I'm gonna be using is my darning foot. So if you notice that that's an open toe darning foot for my sewing machine. Um, some people call that a free motion foot. I use this for free motion quilting. For those of you who um, did the table runner of the month, you can see that I did the applique already. Did you guys see the back? I've already done my uh, table runner of the month that had the ocean theme. And so I showed you guys how to use this foot that month. The other thing you're going to need is you're going to need uh, your image from the, the printout with the Camadoria on it. And this is an eight and a half by 11. Uh, for those of you who use European sizes, this is really close to an A5, right? The other things I'm going to be using today is a piece of fabric. This is my background fabric for this quilt. So instead of a, of a batik, I decided to use a quilting cotton. I'm also gonna use a very lightweight fusible interfacing. Um, Any time that you do any kind of thread work or embroidery on fabric, you're going to want to interface it so that it doesn't pucker. You want to stabilize it. And this is, uh, it's Pelon P44F. So if you notice, this is just a, just a standard uh, lightweight fusible interfacing. It's often used for garment construction. I buy it by the bolt. I just order it online and so I always keep plenty of it on hand. Some people use it to make t-shirt quilts with it. All right, the next thing that I have on hand, and just let me show you the size of these pieces. These are bigger than what I need. And so what I did is I cut these pieces. These are uh, 13 and a half inches high and they are 10 and a half inches wide. So 10 and a half wide by 13 and a half inches tall and the reason I did that is because I want to give myself some trimming room so if I lay my paper in the middle that gives me um, a good seam allowance around my uh, design and that way when I get ready to put it in my quilt I can trim it down to fit the size that I need and it's big enough for me to um, hoop it when I need to hoop it so I wanted to give myself plenty of space for that. All right, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna transfer my image. So first I'm gonna center this onto my background and I'm gonna create little registration marks for myself like this in the corners. And that's just so that I can kind of center my image. And so I'm going to create these little registration marks to let myself know that this is extra right it's outside of the image so now that I have that I'm going to take and I'm going to transfer that image onto my fabric and so this is a pressing cloth I'm going to move that out of my way I'll use that later and I'm just going to take a light box I've shown you guys this light box before it's just an ultra thin light box and I'm gonna lay my image on top. But first I'm gonna do a little bit of outlining. So let me turn that off for a second. I'm going to take my image and I'm going to create a few lines for myself. So I'm just gonna create some kind of general lines of where I want this cat palm to have stems, right? because I need to be able to see that, to transfer that onto my fabric. I'm also going to outline where the pot is gonna be. Now I'm gonna attach the pot that I created earlier. So in a previous episode, I showed you to make all your pots. So when I go to attach my pot, I will do that at the end. But first, I'm gonna create my palm. My first, I'm gonna create my Camadoria. So the first thing that I did is just add these kind of marks on here to allow me to transfer that image onto my fabric. I took my fabric now that has registration marks and I'm gonna fold that in fourths so that I can find my center, just like this. be 
because I want my palm, if you notice, I want this pot to land kind of in here. So I'm going to find the middle of my palm, just like that, which is about an inch above my pot line. So I'm going to line this up. This line right here is my midline. So I'm just going to draw that with a pencil. And I'm going to lay that crease right on top. Now this is right side up, wrong side down. And I'm actually going to draw this on the top of my piece. I'm going to center that with my registration marks down here at the bottom and my registration marks at the top. Make sure that it's good and centered. And now I'm just going to give myself a sketch. Now for sketching this, I have a couple of options. I can use colored pencils. These are children's uh, washable colored pencils. And the reason I like to use these is because when you hit them with an iron, um, the lines go away. You can also use a pencil. So either one of these works. All right, does anybody have any questions so far? All right, so let's get started. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark with this pencil where I'm going to be laying that pot because I'm going to put my pot on here after I'm completely done with this thread sketching. So I'm just going to mark that of where my pot's going to go. Okay. The next thing that I want to do is I want to mark with this pencil, just kind of lightly mark these stems that go on my camadoria. So I'm going to mark all of these stems just like this. Not very dark, just enough for me to see them when I'm working. So that's what I've done. I've transferred them so far. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my colored pencil and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to literally color. So I'm going to move this now out of my way because I don't need it. And you can still see underneath here. And I'm going to come through here and I'm going to actually add the little lines that I want to thread paint onto my Camadoria. So this entire image is going to be made by using those lines and I actually don't need it. And so I'm just going to show you, you're just going to come through here and you're going to try to evenly space these lines. You can come up here. The Camadoria has some leaves that come out here like this. And so what I want to do is I want to give myself a guide for where I'm going to put all the fronds of that cat palm, right? And you can have as many or as few of these as possible. If you find that your fabric is hard to draw on, you may want to starch it a little bit. Um, this fabric has been washed and starched lightly because wiggly fabric is no fun to work with. And so I'm going to do my first round of thread sketching on this palm. Okay, now let's talk about what color choices, what color thread would I use? Since these bits are gonna be in the back, I decided that I was gonna use a variegated thread. And so in my bobbin, I've already loaded my variegated thread and I want the same color in the bobbin that I do on top. And the reason that is, is because if my tension is off even just a tiny bit, you won't be able to tell. So that's a pro tip. Anytime that you're doing um, any kind of embroidery like this, freestyle embroidery with your sewing machine, I always load the same thread in my bobbin that I do in my uh, top. And that way, 
if my tension is off just a hair, it won't matter. All right, so now that I have this, I'm gonna keep working, just kind of rough, add a few more, choose um, whatever you want. You can make this bigger than I created the original image. It doesn't matter. These are just the, the base right now to do the back of the Camadoria. And I'm gonna layer more on top. Right now it kind of looks like a rosemary plant. For those of you who grow kitchen herbs, doesn't that look like a rosemary plant, friends? So then you just make sure you kind of stretch it with your hand. If you're having trouble drawing on your image, then you may want to take your pencil and you may want to blunt the tip like this so that it's flat and it makes it easier. So if I ever find that um, my uh, colored pencil is not drawing and it's usually because the tip is too sharp and it's catching on the fabric. And see, it's much faster when you blunt that tip. And so I'm gonna go here and I have finished the general outline of that. Okay, so next I'm gonna take my thread, my variegated thread, and I'm gonna drop it in my bobbin. But before I do, I'm gonna put a bobbin washer. For those of you who've never seen this, these are called bobbin genies and they're made out of silicone. And whenever I'm doing a lot of free motion quilting, that helps reduce the bird's nest that you might get from time to time if you go too fast. And it also helps my bobbin to kind of move freely inside my bobbin case. And so whenever I'm doing this kind of work, I like to use a bobbin washer. And so that's what's going in my bobbin case, okay? So now this is ready. It has the image on there. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to take, and I'm going to fuse this onto my fabric, this interfacing, but I'm only gonna fuse it on the outsides because I don't want to fuse it to here in case I have to ever unpick something. I only fuse it on the outside, that stabilizer, and then I will hoop the center. And let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat up my iron real, really quick. And so while my iron is heating up, it's only gonna take it a couple of seconds. I'm gonna cut this off. I have enough interfacing for a couple of blocks. I'm just gonna slide this over. Fusible interfacing does two things. Uh, for this particular task. It keeps it from puckering. Anytime that you do heavy embroidery, you're gonna wanna use interfacing um, or stabilizer is what they call it because it does exactly what, what you think it does. It stabilizes the fabric so it doesn't pucker, okay? Yeah, regular sewing machine, regular thread. So there's nothing fancy about what I'm doing. I'm literally only using the straight stitch on my machine. So now that I have this, I'm gonna go ahead and take my wool mat, and you're gonna to wanna to cover your wool mat anytime that you use a fusible. So I just use a Teflon pad. I bought this a long time ago when I was making t-shirt quilts a lot, and it works really well to protect surfaces. So I'm just gonna take, and I'm gonna layer. This has a glue side, like a bumpy side, and I'm gonna put it on the back. I'm gonna center that and then I'm going to take my iron and I'm gonna press around my image, right? My iron is hot. And so I'm just gonna kinda of hold it just to give a little bit of, of adhesion, not a lot, to my image. So I'm pressing around the image, right? I don't wanna stick my fusible interfacing directly to where I'm thread painting, okay? Now that that's stuck on there, just check it and it's uh, not stuck in the center. 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hoop it just like you would if you're going to embroider something. So I'm going to put this on the bottom. Let me see which direction does my hoop go. So I'm doing it the opposite direction because I want my hoop, the biggest part of my hoop, to be on the bottom. So I'm going to go like this, open that up. And I want that nice and tight, right? So I'm going to check the front and I'm going to pull it so that this is nice and snug. So this area should be nice and smooth. No puckers. And then I'm going to tighten that up. So this is regular straight stitch on my sewing machine. I'm going to lower my stitch to uh, 12 to 15 stitches per inch or a 2.0 on a regular machine. Straight stitch, no embroidery stitching, no fancy stitching, just regular straight stitch. Okay. I'm going to take my bobbin case that's been prepared with regular thread. So this is nothing fancy. This is regular 100% cotton thread. It's got a bobbin washer and I'm ready to put it in my machine so I can show you guys what to do next. Okay. Unplug my iron. All right, so let me switch. Can you guys hear me over here at my, uh, at my sewing machine? Okay, so I have removed the foot from my sewing machine. And the reason I removed my foot is because I wanna be able to get this embroidery hoop all the way underneath there. And so you can take your needle out, but I'm gonna raise my needle to the highest position. I'm gonna get it out of there. And then I'm gonna slide that in place. And I'm gonna put my needle back inside the little hole. I'm gonna screw it back in, like push all the way. Can you guys hear me? So now that I have my hoop in there, right, I can go ahead and add my darning foot. So this will allow me to move this with my hands. And let me turn off some of these lights because maybe you guys cannot see me. Can you guys see that? Sometimes when there's too much light, it can be hard to see. All right. So now that I have this hoop and it's inside, Can you guys see that? You guys can see that I have my hoop and my needle. And I'm going to just stick my bobbin case down in the bottom. And then I'm going to push it in place so that I could bring it up towards the top, right? So that's one thing that you always want to do anytime that you're doing any kind of uh, free motion quilting or embroidery work, you're going to want to bring your thread up. So I'm going to put my darning foot in and I'm going to bring that thread up from the bottom. I'm going to start in this area over here where the pot is going to be. And let me try to block some of that light. If that doesn't work, I'll bring my other camera over so you guys can actually get a really good view. Or I'll move my uh, sewing machine. That's not a problem. If I don't like the way this, this is showing on camera. Can you guys see that? Here, let me switch spots. Yeah, way too much light. Um, that's what happens with some of these cameras is they don't like all of the light. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my sewing machine over here and I'm going to pull my other camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay. See if you guys can see. Ah, that's better. Can you guys see better what I'm doing that way? There's a lot less light. And Can you see the, the, you can't see the green pencil lights? Let me try two cameras. Can you guys see that now? Yeah, the, the light on this um, 
sewing machine is super bright. Do you see the lines there? Way too much light and it's coming from this uh, sewing machine. There's no way for me to turn it off. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you guys, there's two camera views. There's a smaller camera view and let me fix that so you guys can see that. Can you guys see that now? So I put two camera views so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing from two angles, okay? All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my thread up. And you, you should be able to see once I actually start um, sewing a little bit more. So let me see if I can move this camera from another angle. Look at me, I have cameras everywhere. <laughs> let me see if we can move this camera this way. Can you guys see me that way? Yeah, still way too much light. Unfortunately, it's daytime here. All right, I think this is gonna have to do. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower my feed dogs and I'm gonna bring the thread up from the bottom, okay? Let's see, tape over my light. Let me see, I don't know if I have tape, but I might be able to stick some paper underneath there. Let me see if I can stick paper. Can you guys see that if I hold that, that under there? Like that. All right, let me see if I have a little piece of masking tape. I don't know if I do or not, but we're just gonna have to work with it and I'm gonna have to show you the, the work. Okay, so what happens is you're gonna drop your needle down. And I think you can see me in this other one. So let me shrink this camera down. I'm gonna move this camera over. All right, and that gives you guys two images. So you guys can see my hands down here and my hands above. Yeah, I don't have any duct tape or painter's tape right now in my sewing space. If I did, I would be using it. All right, friends. So what I did is I dropped my needle down right here. And then I'm going to pull up with the flywheel on my sewing machine and I'm going to pull up. So what that does is that brings the bottom thread to the top right that brings the top thread to the top and let me see if i can bring this other camera in view can you guys see that maybe that camera can let you guys see what i'm doing that one doesn't like all the light either okay so now that i have my thread oh maybe that did it what do you guys think is that a close-up Enough of a close-up? I think we have it. Only cameras everywhere, right? So I brought my lower thread up here. And now I'm going to take both threads in my hand, move them through the darning foot, and I'm going to hold them with my finger. And I'm just going to kind of pinch them out of the way like this because what I want to do after I've dropped uh, my presser foot is to start stitching in place. Okay, so I'm gonna start stitching in place and I'm just gonna do one or two stitches and I'm gonna change my stitch length over here to 2.0 so it's gonna be a really tight stitch length, right? And I'm gonna come across and I'm gonna do take a couple of stitches. So I'm gonna take one or two stitches and that's just to kind of anchor everything. Once I've done that, I can take my scissors and snip that and get it out of the way because I'm not gonna need that and it's just gonna get in my way, okay? And so now that I'm here, you guys can see what'll happen next, okay? So now that I'm here, I'm gonna take both of my hands and I'm gonna hold this hoop. You wanna kinda of keep your fingers away from this space. And I'm gonna allow my uh, machine to take those stitches 
And while I'm doing that, I'm going to guide every one of those. So I'm just going to go slowly. And I'm just going to pull my fingers forward and I'm going to let my machine do all of the work, right? My machine is creating those lines where I drew before and I'm just going to try to go as straight as possible to create those fronds to my palm. And I'm going to use my machine to make all of those little stitches. And this is variegated thread, which means that they're all going to be different colors, just like they are a, on a real plant. And you see there, I went a little fast, so my thread broke, and that will happen. Which is why I do these live, because I want you to see exactly what happens when you're doing this. So that means I'm probably going to have to reduce my tension just a hair. And so you kind of have to go slow. when you're doing this kind of work because if you go way too fast then your thread can break and that's what happens so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to break my thread from the bobbin side and i'm going to re-thread from the top and start all over again exactly where i left off and so i'm just going to snip my thread and I'm gonna keep going and this will happen to you so don't get frustrated because what happens is a lot of times you see all of those curated videos on YouTube and they've edited all of these parts out of the video so that you don't actually see the human side of quilting because there's a human side of quilting right and it involves thread breakages maybe cussing a little from time to time I don't know that happens right and so I'm gonna take and I'm gonna drop that where my thread was before and I'm gonna see if I can keep going with my thread like this and I can I can I can I'm gonna put my uh, my foot back down and I'm gonna go down where I came and travel downward where I was because I'm trying to anchor those stitches right I'm trying to keep it as straight as I can and I'm creating this is where I remove this thread I'm creating my image, right? If you have a lot of places where you have to stop, my suggestion is for you to drop just a drop of fray check. Fray check will keep those threads from coming up. And so let me keep going. I'm gonna keep stitching. And I'm not gonna go too fast because fast is not good when you're doing this kind of work. And so what I'm doing is I'm literally tracing all of those lines with my sewing machine and it's going to build my little cat palm one at a time. The more times you go over an area, the more, the, the more uh, thick your image gets. So what I do is I use my, the stem of my palm to travel back and forth. And so eventually all those lines that I drew just completely disappear. You travel back and forth across the same stem. So you go up and you fill in in between every one of those lines. It creates like a little chain almost. And take your time. Sew right beside where you stitched, not in the same spot over again because you don't want to perforate your fabric. And so I just keep going. And I'm kind of coming back. I'm traveling up and I'm traveling back towards the stem right beside where I stitched before. But not in the same, same exact spot, okay? Can you guys see that? I'm gonna twist this around so you guys can see. So you guys should be able to see where I've traveled. So this is where I've already stitched. You guys see that? And the thread that I'm using is a variegated thread. It's a 100% cotton variegated thread. So this is the color that I'm using right here, if you guys see that. So it's a green thread that has all of the shades of green. 
And what that does is it gives my cat palm some variety. So I'm going to keep traveling, and that's what I'm going to keep doing with this cat palm. I'm just going to keep traveling around, and I can go in any direction. I can switch this around, but I, I work with no more than about six inches at a time. Okay? So let me put my glasses on, and let me keep going. So I'm going to keep going. And I turn it to where it's easiest for me to see and work with. But I like an open foot, darning, uh, open toe darning foot for this kind of work, just because it makes it easier to see where you're going. And so now that I've gotten to this spot, I can travel straight downward. I'm going to travel straight down back to where I started, and I can come across the edge of this pot and go to the next place right so I'm gonna come down carefully I try not to push too fast because what I don't want is for my fabric to get all puckery okay so as you can see I'm just kind of going slow 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 and if I need to adjust at this point if I need to pull this tight around the edges I'm gonna take a moment because I've been messing with that I leave my needle down always in my work whenever I do this and I'm going to push this down and tighten this back up so that this is nice and flat right then the next thing I do is I come across and I slowly come I work from the center outward and I slowly travel over to the edge and I come up again and so I'm coming up the middle and I'm slowly allowing my machine to just go up and I'm using my fingers to go back so important to have a nice sharp sewing machine needle the best ones for this is literally the top stitch needle or a jeans needle and I like to use a size 100 for this small stitch length because I, I'm moving in little tiny increments And you hear that sound that my machine started making? That means my machine needs cleaned. It's getting fuzzy. This produces a lot of lint because your machine is sewing, sewing, sewing. So it's important to stop every so many fronds and get rid of the lint so that you don't skip any stitches. So I'm going to be doing that in just a second. I cleaned before we got started and used a new needle. But now I've got to do it again. So my machine is obviously getting linty stuff in there. And you just have to practice. Getting control of your fabric. You can draw anything you want using thread sketches. Um, you can do birds. I have a whole series of birds that I've drawn that I'm going to be thread sketching in another series next year. I'm doing lots of birds. And so you're going to see me doing that. But you just start working it. And you come back down here where my thread changes back to light and I'm trying to keep the same color together. And then I travel back down to where the stem started. And I move nice and slow. And then I'm going to break my thread. So can you guys see now where my, my little fronds are working? Yes, my feed dogs um, are actually not dropped right now. So somebody said, are your feed dogs dropped? They're not. So if you have a machine and the feed dogs don't drop, you can still do this because my feed dogs have not been dropped. So you can do that with your feed dogs up or with your feed dogs down. So you can do this with any machine that just does regular straight stitching. 
And as you can see, now I've taken all of the things that I drew and I now have an image. And let me uh, break my thread so you guys can see that. Let me move all of this out of the way. Take my darning foot out and pull that out from underneath my needle. I don't want to break that, so I'm going to have to remove this needle. So the, there's not a lot of clearance in this machine, but I just take the needle off. And let me show you guys. So you can do it with any machine that you have in your house that will sew a straight stitch. And all of a sudden, let me show you what I've got. Let me flip this around. Look at that. All of a sudden, I've taken... Let me move this other camera so you guys can see me. I've taken that image that I drew and I now have painted it using my thread. And so you really don't have to have a fancy machine as long as your machine um, does a straight stitch and you can lower that stitch length to like a 2.0 or 15 or b between 12 and 15 stitches to the inch, you can create this. And if you look, it's literally looks like it's been painted in. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna have all of those um, little fronds that go to this cat palm done. And then when I'm finished, the entire piece gets pressed. And so this is it, friends. Super easy. This is thread painting lesson number one. I want you guys to practice with some scrap. It's important to be sure to have your, um, your interfacing your stabilizer or interfacing adhere to your piece. Let me heat up my iron and show you guys how easy those lines disappear, but this is super easy. I know sometimes newbies are scared to try these things, but it's actually with a little bit of practice, you can do this really, really well. So let me just show you. I'm gonna let the iron heat up for a second. I'm going to press it inside this cloth so that it doesn't get any um, pencil or waxes or anything all over my uh, wool mat. So let me just show you. So now that my iron is hot, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a press. And like I said, you can redo those lines. And so there you have it. It's nice and smooth I check the back and if I don't see a bunch of puckers then I know that my um, tension is correct on this machine and I checked that before we started see my tension so it looks the same on the back as it does on the front so yeah now that my machine is making that noise I'm gonna have to clean it before I continue so if you work with your sewing machine with this kind of stuff it's important you hear that clunk 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 sound on your sewing machine that means your sewing machine is getting linty underneath here on my machine i just pop this off and mine has gotten a bunch of lint so i'm going to clean it off and then i will continue doing this work but it's important to know what your machine is capable of my machine is capable of doing um, a lot of things with with almost nothing and so look take and just take and and make sure you press it well as you continue like i said if your lines disappear, it's not a big deal. You can redraw your lines. You can even freestyle all of that. And now that it's nice and flat, I can continue working with this. If you put too much starch, it won't hoop right. If you don't have enough starch, then it'll be too floppy. So um, I like to put interfacing like this, some stabilizer. That does not wash out, it stays in the quilt, but once you wash it, it's really flexible. All right, friends. This is all for now, it is 644. I'm gonna be cleaning my machine and I'm gonna finish thread sketching this and then I'm gonna post my finished block on the website and on the YouTube channel in about an hour and a half once I get done with this. So it'll take me 90 minutes to finish thread painting all of this and cleaning my machine. I'm gonna add my pot and then I'm gonna post it so you can see the next time that we're together and that's going to be, let me see what date is that. That is going to be September 3rd. I'm going to be doing thread painting part two and in that lesson I'm going to show you how to combine thread painting with fabric that fuses on so I'm going to show you how to make some of the bigger plants before we work on applique in October, November, and December. And so if you work with me on this project 
then we should be able to finish all of the bits uh, in time for New Year's Day. All right, friends, that's all for now. Please give this a big fat like if you like it. Like I said, practice on a scrap piece of paper. Maybe you're just going to make one pot and you're going to frame it and give it to a friend who loves plants. You don't have to make the entire quilt. Just because I'm making 17 little plants in this project doesn't mean you have to make all 17. Maybe you're just making one and you're making the camadoria and you're giving it to somebody you love. All right, friends, this is all for now. We're going to be working on this project, like I said, for the next six months. And I will see you guys next month for another video lesson. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I will be here back next Sunday to work on the new Quilters Boot Camp and to get started on the Pokemon quilt, which some of the people are working with me. So we're going to be making Pokemon blocks. Let me give you a sneak peek. If you are working with me, we're making Pokemon blocks. So I've already started making a bunch of these cute little Pokemon blocks. So next Sunday, we're working on that. And we are also working on our new Quilters Boot Camp project. So we're going to be putting these blocks together into bigger blocks. I'm going to show you the importance of squaring and centering your blocks for the Pokemon quilt. And I will be dropping the Pokemon pattern um, later on tonight on the website so you're going to find a full pattern that has images and instructions i love you guys thank you guys for stopping by uh, if you miss this live don't panic i always leave the replays all right everybody you guys have a wonderful evening and you have a great work week ahead bye everybody i'll see you guys later bye friends